I usually talk about luxury handbags and jewelry on my channel, but I really believe in mindful and responsible spending. So today, I want to talk about money, mainly on how I manage my personal finance, prepare for the future, and splurge responsibly. Now, I understand this is quite an uncommon topic for a luxury channel, but I really hope you'll find this helpful. Also, just a little disclaimer, this is just my opinion about money. There are many good resources out there if this is a topic of your interest. My first money advice is to not get in debt, especially consumer's debt. Now, technically, that's good debt as well. For example, if you take out a business loan to expand your company, because when used in this context, the debt can be used as a leverage to increase your company's profit. However, consumer's debt is almost always a bad debt, and credit card bill is a classic example. I still use my credit card to pay for everything because of the cashback benefits, but I'll never spend on something if I cannot pay in full the next month. I'm sure a lot of you know the interest for credit card is as high as 20%, so if you're just making the minimum payment, you'll be losing a lot of money to the bank, and it will take you years to clear the balance. As much as I love luxury shopping, I have to say, no luxury item is worth getting in debt for. Money tip number two, pay yourself first. Now this is quite a common phrase used in many personal finance books, which essentially means saving for your future first before spending. Conventionally, when you get paid, we are kind of programmed to pay all the bills first and then try to save whatever that's left. Paying yourself first, however, means saving a portion of your paycheck and then adjust your spending based on the balance. So for example, if you are paid a thousand pounds a month and you decide to pay yourself 20%, that will mean you are saving 200 pounds and the remaining 800 pounds is what you can spend for the month. Basically, you are not attending to your expenses first, such as shopping and entertainment, Instead, you are taking care of yourself and your future affairs. I find this practice incredibly powerful because it has really helped me to adjust my spending and expenses as if I had a pay cut. Every time I get paid, a percentage of my money will be taken off. Everything feels so automated and I honestly don't feel like spending that money anymore like I used to. Money tip number three, have your emergency fund. So with the money you've saved, from tip number two, you can now have a pot of cash ready for the rainy days. So this money, as the name suggests, should only be used for emergency, such as medical bills, pay cut, or job loss. The amount really depends on your personal situation, but a lot of people would suggest anything from six to 12 months of your monthly expenses. This money will really give you the peace of mind because you know if money stops coming in today, you'll be okay for six months. What more, your emergency fund really gives you a level of flexibility and control. For example, if your boss is being unreasonable, you know you have the option to walk away and have a good six months to look for a new job. Or you might want to take some unpaid leaves for travel. For me, just having that sense of security really gave me the motivation to save and I do sleep better now knowing that has been taken care of. Money tip number four, don't just save your money. So after you've built up your emergency fund, consider investing the money you save from your paycheck every month. The aim is to make your money work for you. Now the current inflation rate in the UK is 3%, which means the value of your money will drop by 3% every year. So you've probably heard your parents say before that you could buy a house for £10,000 20 years ago, but now the same house would cost £100,000. Essentially, if you're just saving your money in the bank, your money will lose a lot of buying power in 20 or 30 years, especially because the interest rate is so low right now. There are many ways you can invest your money, including bonds, stocks, commodities, properties, business, and so on. I'm not a financial advisor, so make sure you look for professional advice. But personally, I like to invest in low-cost, broad-based index funds because it's simple and a lot cheaper. Now, this is a topic of its own, so I'm not going to go too much into it. But ultimately, every month, 
I'm paying myself first by taking a portion of my paycheck and then using it for investing. And a lot of it is in index funds. And I'm just gonna leave my money in there and let it grow by compound interest. Albert Einstein had said, compound interest is the most powerful force in the whole universe. And I think it's very applicable to long-term investing as well. So just for simplicity, let's say you've invested £100 and let's assume the market return is 10%. So now your money has grown from 100 to £110. Next year, it will go up to £121 and so on. Essentially, your profit is also now generating you money. Now, I'm not disregarding the fact that market can also go down, but it's beyond the scope of this video. So if you're interested, I'll make sure to leave some good resources in the description box down below. My last money tip is also the most exciting one, and that's the fun money. So this is the money I use for my shoes, handbags, and jewelry. Now I think being responsible with money doesn't mean you can never splurge on anything. Instead, it's about setting priorities. And as you can see, this comes last on my list. So if you've taken care of your money goals, I think you deserve to celebrate and pamper yourself. Now some people might say there's some serious opportunity cost when you buy anything expensive. For example, the money you spent on the Chanel handbag could have been invested somewhere else. While this argument is valid, I also believe balance is the key in everything. So if you have worked hard, treat yourself to something that really makes you happy once in a while. Now I'm assuming your fun money is limited, at least for me it is, so make sure to shop smart by only buying things that truly spark joy and benefiting from sales and coupons. In the next video, I'll be sharing with you how I shop for luxury items mindfully, so make sure to watch out for that. There you have it. Those are the five money tips that have worked really well for me. Truthfully, I've not always been good with money, but I'm glad I picked up a few lessons along the way, so I thought I'll share them with you. Let me know if you have other money suggestions as well. I really hope you've enjoyed the video. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next one. Bye.